So, I'm going to talk very, very formally in this video. And um, because I'm fed up, I'm really, really sick to my stomach of this justice system in this country. Charlie Flanagan's justice system, this in incorrupt customs across the justice system, across the system. Yeah, we might as well go and get across the system, to be honest with you. Um, we might as well go and put Crust in charge of the government. Um, because they probably do better. Crust they probably do better of bread than anything else do better than, than, than Charlie Flanagan anyway. Um, so today I looked at the newspaper, right? I was looking to see what was the story with the local crimes and all that. And you know, you come across this. I come across this. You know, a house burglary, right? It happens every day of the week, right? Um, you know, we're reading through it, and we're through it, and, them, and you know the circumstances where the house got buggered. Apparently this tug, I'm going to use the word tug, and an absolute disgrace to society. The best word to describe this film. You know, went and buggered this poor woman's house. You know, they had to go to her sister's funeral. Now, you know, and watching her leave the house to go to her sister's funeral, and her grief shrunken, and then robbing her house. And you just, like... Does this fellow have any heart? Because he honestly doesn't. I might as well say it straight and I say it to his face. I would love the gals just to bring him up to me and just say, because I do better than any judge. I tell you that, I do better than any judge. I give him what I give him what he deserves. I name him and shame him. Um, I obviously didn't mention his name because obviously he wasn't from Ireland. He wasn't from Ireland. He was from God knows where. I don't know where it was said. I don't even think it said where he's from. But it said non-Irish national. Um, and you, what do you know? The bottom of the court, right? Bottom up, the gals wrote up a big, huge report. Well, I think it was nearly 16 or 17 pages long. Of, you know, text messages with his friends saying, you know, he's going to go into a house and rob and he's, he's at the funeral. You know, what what more evidence do you want? Like, honestly, and then, you no know, evidence. Then he gets a lawyer. The state provides him with a lawyer because he couldn't afford one. And, you know, and it, it makes it bad enough that the gals, you know, two gals that got the person, you know, wrote up a huge, huge report. Huge! Like, I mean, huge report. To try and get as much, you know, try and get him convicted. Obviously, he deserved to, really deserved to get kicked up the hole anyway. Um, but apparently, the judge had a better idea and just let him off in community service and a few and a few bucks of a fine. Um, and felt sorry for him and felt very sorry for him that he didn't have employment in this country and they had to turn to life of crime. Isn't that just brilliant? The, you know, this poor woman had to go to her sister's funeral and came back and her house was ransacked. And you, the, the judge is more worried about. You know, he doesn't have employment, isn't that sad? Like, honestly, honestly, to this judge, I say get a life. If you, if you really want to be a judge, go and get a life. Because, good God, if you're that sad that you're going to take pity on people who commit a crime, you know, for, in, especially in that circumstance, then what kind of a judge are you? As simple as that, I don't know why the state employs you to be a judge. But, good God Almighty, you might need a new job. You might need to be put on the council for a while and do sweep the roads for a while. Maybe then you might learn a bit of decency, a bit of respect for, you know, law. Obviously, you studied law. Obviously, I haven't studied as much law as you have studied. But, you know, there's times where justice has to show a blind eye. But this is not one of the times to show a blind eye when something like that happens. And I'm sure if he was put in that situation, I might as well say, if that judge was put in the same situation, I'm sure he wouldn't like it. To be said, there's nothing we can do. And he sold the items already. We're not going to bother looking into it. Um, That's more or less what was said. Um... And I just say it's Charlie Flanagan's fault. It's really, really Charlie Flanagan's fault that this country's turned into a, you know, like the way some people are phrasing it, that gangs rule Ireland. That gangs, gangsters rule Ireland's streets. And that is that is true. And some parts of Ireland that is very, very true. I'm not going to lie to you, but it's true. And, you know, you just have to say, what are we doing? What are we do why, why are we not tackling this? We should attack it before it gets any bigger. And we should nip it in the bud if that's uh, any, that anybody ever heard that saying. Before it gets out of control. And you know, an absolute tear into the living daylights out of the people who are, you know, making a out of some of them. And locked them up for a long, long time and left them in prison and left them to starve in the prisons. You know, we teach them, it's each a few people in the them. And it's simple as that, because that's what we need to show. We need to show authority. We need to show that the rule of law still is, has some kind of place in Ireland. No matter if Charlie Flanagan doesn't believe in it, Leo Franklin doesn't believe in it, but we have to show that we do believe in it, and we want a safe society for our children to live in, and our, you know, our grandchildren to live in. We don't want to live in a Turkish society. And you know, I say that I really feel sorry for that poor woman, having to come home, 
from our funeral, burying our sister, and have to come home to a house ransack. Now, let me tell you, having one grievance on your mind is annoying. Having two grievances, when as soon as you go home or come home from the funeral, you have to look at the house that's ransacked. And then second, you have to go into the garage station and give evidence and feel like you're a suspect. Because that's the way the guards treat you, or something like that. They treat you, treat you like a suspect. And it's simply, simply not on. Like, honest to God. If anybody had a brain, and if anybody had a mind, and anybody had a heart, they wouldn't do it. They would never go in and be that evil to do that to somebody that's going to a funeral. They would never be, like, honestly, I can't see no any goodness in this person that done it. And I might as well be honest. And I think he should be kicked off our, in, in wherever, I don't know where he comes from, but I think he should be kicked on the boat and left it, and they can go off and cause trouble in some other country. And, you know, they wouldn't take it. Some countries wouldn't take him to just throw him into prison and just lock him up and never let him out again. That would save half of the hassle. But apparently community service, they're just going to put him on community service and find him so much. And, you know, he'd be a good boy then, apparently. Apparently. He doesn't have a job, but he'd be a good boy. I don't know where he's going to get the money from, but apparently he's going to be a good boy. Um, so says Charlie Flanagan. Um, but seriously, this is happening every day of the week. The guard, like, I don't blame the guards. I really, really don't blame the guards. I blame the head guards, um, superintendents and all them. But I don't blame the only white and fired guard that's doing his best, you know, to... Like, these two guards that were up huge reports on the suspect. You know, they, they, they did the huge amount to try and get him convicted. To write every detail down that they got. Everything they got. Every evidence they got. You know, they bagged it and wrote it down. And, you know, spent loads of time writing up reports for the court. And, you know, the judge just says... You know, he basically looks down on the guards and says, you know, what are you doing? Why, why, why are you wasting our time here? This is not a crime breaking into somebody's house when they're at a funeral. It's not a crime. Why are you here? You know, that's the way they treat And then if you, you know, if you didn't pay your tax, you'd be literally public enemy number one. If you stole matchbox, this is, I say this tons of times. If I went into the shop now and stole a box of matches, you literally would have every judge in the country looking down on you saying, why did you do that? I would, you know, what the have some fire to light for my children that are starving on the street. Well, I don't care. You're going to prison for the next 60 years. That's how bad this country's got. They know the people who sell drugs, they get the highest honour in the land. They might even become president. Because that's how, that's how much they're taught up, up in, Do- in Dal Aaron and Shannon Aaron. They might become president. They might become president. Drug dealers might become president. They might rule over Ireland then. But um, that's the way they treat them in Dal Aaron and Shannon Aaron. You know, they're... they're they're righteous, they're the law, you know, they pay off the government to, you know, to turn a blind eye now and again. Um, we know what's going on, we don't, we're not too stupid, that's not going on. But uh, I say to people, um, you know, we have to, I don't know what we really have to do, but the justice system in Ireland is not getting any better, it's getting terrible, it's terrible. People are not, there's no justice. Simple as that's no justice. In some cases there's justice, in other cases there's no justice. And that's just a clear example, there's no justice for what happened. And there's no there's no sorry. He didn't say sorry. You know, he just he didn't say anything to the person. And the fact that, you know, he didn't he didn't show any remorse and more or less laughed at the gals, in other words. You know, writing up huge paperwork and everything to get him convicted and then being let off. Like, I think it's only 16 or 17 hours just to do community service. Like it's not even, it's not even a whole day he has to do it, would you believe? And, you know, like, you have to, you have to wonder. You really, really just have to wonder. Why do we bother? Why do we really bother, you know, to pay tax to the government if they're not going to put away people who are dangerous to society, dangerous to the public, dangerous to, dangerous to everybody? And just thinking they can rule Ireland with an iron fist, no matter if the drug dealers, cartels, no matter who they are, or your average junkie on the street. We have to, we have to as a country, we have to show the rule of law still exists in Ireland. The government might not believe in it, but hopefully the Irish people does believe in it. That there is some kind of law and order in this country. But Leo Wagner and Charlie Flanagan, they don't give a damn if the country blew up in the morning. As long as their house doesn't blow up, then that's fine. They don't care less. Um, but I say to people, you know, never fear. Never fear. Because things will get better. It has to get bad before it gets better. Anyway, take a watch and subscribe for more. And bye.